Please rise and we'll continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. We pause for a moment of reflection. God, our comforter, like, like lost sheep, sheep we, we have gone astray. We, we gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we pray. Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive Let us join together now as we pray the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind 
and reaching out to what lies ahead. We may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Amos chapter 5. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground, they who hate the one who reproves in the gate, they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. So seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me on Psalm 90. So, teach us to number our days. That, that we, we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad by as many days as you afflicted us. And as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works. And your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Second reading is from Hebrews chapter 4. And now the bells.
The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 4. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, and yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Invite us now to stand as we sing the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him and loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own, give your money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to the disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For with God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no left who has, brought, who has left brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Would you join me now in a word of prayer this morning as we uh, contemplate our scripture? Father, we give you thanks for your word, your word that calls us from death to life, from silence to speech, from our idleness to service in your world. Renew us, transform us once again with the living word in Christ our Lord. Amen. Fascinating passage of scripture this morning out of the 10th chapter of Mark, and we continue that trajectory in Mark as we think about what it means to follow Christ, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And of course, not only as a follower, when we think about that word disciple, not only as a follower, I love this, but also as a learner. As members of the body of Christ, there is never that point where we are not invited to continue to learn. To learn not only what it means to be a follower of Jesus, but to learn more about the fullness and experience of God's reign and God's kingdom. 
Interesting passage here in Mark 10, of course, that's recorded not only in the gospel according to Mark, but also in Matthew and Luke as well. And there are some idiosyncrasies here in Mark that are interesting to look at. It is the young man here in the gospel according to Mark who comes up, approaches Jesus, takes up the posture of kneeling, and asks Jesus, right, good teacher, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And immediately Jesus in his wisdom turns to him and says, why in fact you call me good? No one is good but God alone. We learn right from the get-go that in our society when we think about what is good, in fact perhaps there is only one notion of what is good and that is what is revealed to us by God. Uh, our preoccupations, our inner thoughts and feelings, our ways in which we flaunt that which we might think is good, in effect, only God knows what is really good. And in that spirit is Jesus who responds now to the man before him, not only saying, uh, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. But then says, well, you know the commandments. God's goodness for the creation is reflected in the commandments, as we all know, those first three and those last seven. The first three are relationship with God. Those last seven are relationship with our neighbor. And Jesus says, you know the commandments. And he begins to elaborate, beginning with commandment five, six, seven, eight. Then he goes back to number four. And the man turns to Jesus and says, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. And it's interesting what Jesus does next. Notice how Mark inserts this. Jesus looked at him, loved him. Which, by the way, this is the only time in the Gospel according to Mark where we hear this phrase. He looked at him, and he loved him, and said, You'll lack one thing. Go and sell what you own. Give your money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Interesting in North America how we hear this text. I think it was last week that I caught the uh, Forbes 400 list. Maybe you had a chance to look at that as well. Forbes magazine, uh, as they print as they publicize uh, the top 400 richest, wealthiest people, if you will, in the United States. And not only for the United States, they do this for other countries as well. Uh, interesting, this last year in 2021 within the United States, according to Forbes magazine, uh, we have well over 725 billionaires living in this country. The top 400 billionaires in this country Number one, number two, number three. And if you look at number one and number two, hang on to your hats. Those two alone possess over $320 billion. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. I look at my peck check, nowhere close to that. I don't know about you, Pastor Sarah. I don't know about you. Off my spectrum. And yet, soberly, I have to step back and realize, although I, I'm not a billionaire, in all effect, when I square myself against the world population, I'm a very rich person. I'm a very wealthy person. And what do we do with, with texts like this one, when Jesus says, go and sell, give to the poor, and then come follow me? I think perhaps as we hear this text, Jesus speaks as he loves this person, as he loves you, as he loves me. The penetrating and perhaps most important question is this one. For this man in this text, we see the effects. Right? He, he speaks these words and Jesus again speaks these words and invites him to do this. And here's what happens. He was shocked. He was grieving. And he left. Why did he leave? Because he had many possessions. I love the King James translation. He had great possessions to the point where perhaps it was in the way of completely following Jesus. This text should shake us up a little bit. I know it does for me. 
And I think the penetrating question is this question for us today. What is it that stands in the way of you and for me of receiving the experience of the kingdom of God? What is it that stands in the way? What is it blocks God's unconditional love, God's unconditional mercy, God's peace, God's love and forgiveness in your life and the ways in which we perhaps block that from our neighbor. Only you can really answer that. And then the sobering question is maybe this one. What needs to change? Just this past weekend, I had the great delight of of teaching up in Duluth with our lay leader network, with Dr. Andrew Root from Luther Seminary, myself, Dr. Dave Maisner. And one of the things that, that Andrew Root in his book floats out there, uh, the congregation in a secular age, is this observation of our secular society, this observation of the society that is moving like rocket fast. And it is this question, in what ways have we confused fullness with busyness? You ever notice that? Popular parlance in North American culture, how you doing? And the first response often is, been busy. What does that mean, you've been busy? In North America, oftentimes we even take that as a status symbol, that somehow I've been busier than you are, so therefore I'm more important than you are. And I wonder sometimes do we mistake that sense of fullness that the gospel is getting at here, that the kingdom is getting at here, with busyness? What needs to change in our lives? As the man went away, he turns to the disciples, and and the disciples, you can see, are perplexed by this teaching. And as Jesus does in in his marvelous wisdom, he turns to the disciples, and he listens to them, and they turn to him, and they say, Look at teacher, who then can be saved? And Jesus pulls this familiar metaphor, this this familiar proverb that's probably circulating in the culture, and he says, Here's the deal. It would be easier for a camel to walk through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. In other words, it's an impossibility. And they turn to Jesus and they, who, who that can be saved? And Jesus turns and addresses the disciples and says, for mortals, this is impossible. But not for God. For with God and through God, all things are possible. And as the Lord is standing there in their midst, we begin to see what God is going to do now in a very powerful way through Jesus Christ in a way that's never been done before. Who Jesus birthed through his life, through his ministry, through his innocent suffering and death on a Roman cross, through his resurrection for you. For you and for me. And not just for you and not just for me, but for the sake of God's world. That we can now receive this kingdom. We can now enter into the reign of God. We can now fully experience the unconditional love, grace, mercy, and peace that this world cannot give through Jesus Christ. It's yours. And we have the privilege of sharing that with our neighbor and living out the kingdom in the ways that benefit our neighbor, that lift up our neighbor, that are not against our neighbor, but that are for our neighbor. As we think about this text, and not just to think about it, but to live into it, there's some real concrete ways that that I think we can do this. Let me just say a couple things about that. This year at Bethlehem, our annual theme, Experience the Rain. I love this theme. It's a perplexing theme. It's a difficult theme. It's a mysterious theme. It's a transformative theme. Experience the rain. It is that invitation for all of us to enter more fully into the rain of God that's been revealed in Jesus. A couple things to think about. Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday night, so we have an opportunity to engage the one year reading through the Bible. We know this, that God encounters us through Scripture in very powerful ways. Join us. Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, we'll have dinner downstairs. Then we're into looking just an overview of those first five books of the Bible. 
We'll be showing you a very powerful tool through Luther Seminary. Enter the Bible, this great tool for doing Bible study. So join us. Very simple. Just go online, sign up, or call the church office and come. The Tuesday after that, as we think about experiencing the reign of God in Christ Jesus, forming groups, prayer groups, right here at Bethlehem, three to seven people in a group, just loving on each other, checking in with one another. How you doing? Praying for one another. Praying for our nation. Praying for our world. Experiencing the reign and the power of God's kingdom through his Christ. And the invitation is for you. Thanks be to God. together to profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Amen. Main children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Uniting God, you call forth the different gifts in those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. Lord, in your mercy. Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and beauty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in the fields and orchards. Provide good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Sheltering God, in Jesus you traveled among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind. Give comfort to those who suffer. We especially pray for Brenda Lawton, Phyllis Roberts, Jessica Rodenbiker, Barry Rempel, all those who suffer from COVID-19, Michael Zucker, victims of domestic violence, resident staff of assisted living and nursing home facilities, healthcare workers, all caregivers, and all battling cancer. Lord, in your mercy. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us to part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died. We especially give you thanks for Danny McCarthy, Mark Schuster, Dan Ostehag, and Pete Peterson. 
Make us confident in your promise of salvation and support us in our own journeys of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Take a moment and greet those around you. I got him. Hi, Noah. It's good to see you. I, he's sitting already. Peace be with you. Oh, you want one? There you go, dude. Please be seated. Just a couple of announcements to highlight for you. You heard Pastor Mark talk about this. Tuesday we'll start our read through the Bible, and the following week we'll start our prayer partners. Um, check out your bulletin. Corey is phenomenal at making lots of things fit in small spaces. So, and if you have questions or things, call us in the office and we're happy to help you out with those things. But if you'd like to read through the Bible, it starts Tuesday, so sign up now. Um, and pick your prayer partners because we all can use a wee bit of more prayer in those things. So make note of both of those opportunities. At this time, we'll have our ushers wait upon us and we'll collect our tithes and offerings. Please rise and let us continue with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn. 